Hello and welcome. My name is Carmen Little and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Let us gather in the gift and hope of spirit. Let us gather for growth and wisdom that comes from God. Let us gather for the sake of the poor and vulnerable. Let us gather to learn God's righteousness and its doing. Let us gather in the safety and diversity of God's sanctuary. Let us gather to seek God and in seeking to praise. We pray. We confess, O God, that we find it difficult to imagine the world you offer, where predators and prey no longer threaten or fear, where knowledge and not ignorance or hatred fills the earth, and where a little child may lead. Forgive us for lack of holy imagination. Forgive us for lives and institutions dispirited by the lack of your imagination and its vision. Make us ever mindful of your eternal and bounteous love for us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that being taught by you in Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be opened to know the things that pertain to life and holiness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today's words from the prophet Isaiah are some of the most beautiful words ever written about humanity's longing for peace. These are some selected words from Isaiah's writings. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and power, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. With righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand in the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah is saying that when the Messiah comes in all of his fullness, all people will live in peace, dignity, and love. This is where the world is headed. The birth of Jesus was the beginning of a grand and glorious invasion of divine love. In the language of war, a beachhead has been established. The seed of the kingdom of peace and love has been planted. The love that began with a tiny infant will someday overcome all the anger and hostility and hatred that resides in human hearts. And we shall all know that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And all people across this world will live in peace and dignity together. Even though young men and women are still giving their lives in faraway places at war, there will come a time when war will be no more. This is Isaiah's message for us today. War is a terrible thing. Someone was once heard saying, war never decides who's right, only who's left. When the Messiah comes, war will be no more. That has always been the hope and the prayer of the people called Christians. The testimony of scriptures is that there will come a time when all of God's children will come to the realization that in Christ we are all brothers and sisters. Artificial boundaries will cease to exist. We will all belong to one kingdom, the kingdom of God. The early Christians did not bear arms. They believed that God would soon straighten out the world and that they should follow the Master's example and lay down their lives for the world. However, as time passed and Christ did not come as quickly as they had expected, they began to moderate their views on war. Sometimes it is necessary to don armor and fight in order to keep evil people from forcing their will on the weak and innocent. 
At such times, it is permissible to take up arms, but this should be the last resort. War should always be the last option available, and we should always look for ways to be peacemakers. Further, we should always look for that day when the Messiah comes for the final time, and the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. Peace and repentance. Peace and being in a right relationship with God. Peace and looking to God and walking in His light are so intimately linked that you cannot have one without the other. Think of how elusive peace can be, how far away the kingdom of heaven seems at times. We only need to watch the news to see just how little peace there is in our world. Just sometimes there is more suffering and killing, and sometimes there is less. And think of our community. Think of the addictions, the ignorance, the greed, and the rebellion that we see. Think of those people who live in fear, and of those who do all kinds of self-destructive things. And yes, think of those bedrooms or living rooms or playrooms where there is violence or neglect. There is no peace in the hearts of literally millions of people, but there can be, for we can and do see peace around us as well. We see nations without civil wars or violent oppression within, nations reasonably well run whose people have food, clothing, and a place to sleep, nations that run according to the rule of law, a law that respects individuals and tries to ensure people of certain fundamental rights. And we see families and individuals within families with peace. We see them, even when afflicted by disease or accident or poverty, not only with peace, but with a kind of joy and hope and love that radiates from them. On the world scene, Peace doesn't seem to come by making treaties or alliances, nor does it seem to come by fighting for peace, by bombing cities, or by assassinating foreign leaders. And in our lives, peace doesn't seem to come by buying the right kind of deodorant, nor by investing in the right kind of securities or mutual funds, nor even by obtaining a better paying job, or by trading in our husband or wife on a new and better model. Peace obtained in these ways lasts for only a short moment, and then our hunger, our desire, our anxiety arises once again. Our inner and outer conflicts return. Where is peace to be found? Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that one of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning the chaff with unquenchable fire. The words of John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Peace comes with repentance. Peace comes with turning towards God and living within Christ. 
Peace comes by preparing the way for the coming of the Promised One. It grows out of us. Not because of something special about us, because of something special about the God we open ourselves up to, the God we resolve to truly love, truly trust, truly obey. We read the story of John the Baptist and of how he went out into the wilderness and there preached a baptism of repentance and the good news of the coming of the promised one of God. It is deliberate and it is repetitious because it is the truth we need to hear. Where is peace? It is bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. Fruit that arises out of our conscience and deliberate acts of love out of our conscience and deliberate acts of forgiveness. Out of our conscience and deliberate acts of prayer out of our conscience and deliberate devotion out of our daily turning and opening to God. What is repentance all about? It is about turning to God, yearning for God, and allowing God's word to work in us, that we are focused on the path of righteousness. Deliberately engaging in random acts of kindness, forgiving those who do not know what they do, and even those who do. Wouldn't it be nice to have peace within yourself? Wouldn't it be nice if you weren't so harsh with yourself? Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have anger? Wouldn't it be nice to have peace within our families? Wouldn't that be nice? No more arguing with your spouse, no more refereeing the children's squabbles, a family vacation with nothing but smiles. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if there were peace on earth? I will be ending today's message with a poem from an unknown author. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. We continue now with our prayers of the people. Let us Pray to our God and to Jesus Christ, the King who reigns throughout all of our lives. We thank you for the difference you have made in people's lives, for your kingship is unlike any other. You care for the needs of all and make love your top priority for all governance. We thank you for the restoration of health that individuals have experienced, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. We thank you for those who have traveled the extra mile on behalf of others. We thank you for our country and community. We are grateful for our many blessings of food, friendship, shelter, and hope. We pray for all those who are gathered here and for our families near and far. We pray for the leaders of this community, of our province and our country. May they be granted wisdom and insight and lead with mercy, justice, and peace. We pray for those who live in areas of strife, famine, and oppression. May they know our concern. May we reach out to offer our help. We pray for people who bring relief to those facing disaster and hurt in their lives. May their work be fruitful, and may they make a difference to those lives. We pray for people who serve us every day in various ways, doctors, nurses, police, firefighters, and all who serve us so faithfully. Hear our prayers and continue your grace and mercy to each of us. In Christ we pray, amen. The love of God is yours to share. The peace of Christ is yours to extend. The power of the Holy Spirit is yours to offer. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord 
And may the blessings of God, Creator, Word, and Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Go in peace.